1991 Osprey Land Rover Defender 91st Test Review, Iconoclastic Fantastic. Pros. Head-turning good looks. Better than new galvanized forever frame. Baller Bentley grade leather. Cons. Underdeveloped ride slash drivability. Fiddly aftermarket UX. Authentic panel fit. The Land Rover Defender was England's response to the American Army Jeep that helped liberate the UK. This no-nonsense, closeout tool was designed, built, and worked like a hammer. Now that it's been around for nearly as long as America's venerable Army Jeep, the aftermarket can't resist gilding these ditch lilies with ferocious Yankee V8 power, diamond-stitched hides, and pile carpeting that will never face a sheep dung crusted Wellington boot. Is this corruption of an icon's original mission warranted? Does the resulting product work? We mounted our test gear to find out. What's an Osprey Land Rover Defender 90? As we explained in our recent first drive of its soft top 90, Osprey Custom Cars of Wilmington, North Carolina, carries out extensive frame-off restorations built on a completely new, better reinforced, stamped steel frame, not box welded. The frame is also made of thicker gauge steel and is hot dip galvanized for the ultimate in corrosion protection, inside and out. This shiny frame remains clearly visible and serves as an easy way to distinguish Osprey Land Rovers from those overhauled by other companies like Twisted Automotive and East Coast Defenders, which typically paint or powder coat their frames black. Osprey offers fewer build options, which simplifies the ordering process and keeps prices down. As founder Aaron Richardit says, I don't want a $500 folks to death, so he offers a choice of body, the mix is about 70% two-door 90s and 30% four-door 110s, with about half being soft tops, color, wheels, and a raised or lowered suspension, typically at no extra charge unless someone demands something peculiar. Our test vehicle's fully diamond-quilted leather interior, seats, side panels, and headliner is a $16,000 option over the base black leather seats with Technomesh inserts and Alcantara headliner. Our truck's interior also included forward-facing rear bucket seats that fold up against the side windows, whereas base 90s get a pair of two-person rear benches facing each other. Note that the sides and rear of the hardtop are fully dark-tinted Maasai glass, not black paint. Corvette sourced LS3 crate motor. GM has made a profit center out of selling crate engines, and this Corvette sourced and branded LS3 V8 comes bundled with a 6L80E automatic transmission and all the software required to make the whole thing sing. In our case, with the donor chassis being more than 30 years old, the exhaust features an oxygen sensor but no catalytic converters to alter its oral, or olfactory, quality. It's also programmed for harsh full throttle shifts that utterly do away with any shred of British reserve. GM performance rates the LS3 at 430 horsepower and 425 lbft, but Osprey claims its tuning and freer flowing Borla exhaust deliver for 35 plus HP and 445 plus lbft, keeping everything cool is a Griffin aluminum radiator, and almost all fluids flow through braided stainless lines. To accommodate this engine, the hood is bulged and the bulkhead is replaced with a more modern design that provides more powertrain clearance and accepts the latest dash. So how Corvette why is it? We managed to coax a 5.5 second 0 to 60 run out of this 4,346 pound Defender 90 en route to a 14.5 second, 95.9 mph quarter mile run in between fault code fits, which we'll get to. That compares with 7.4, 16.3, and 81.0 for a recent test of a fully emissions compliant soft top model weighing 4,303 pounds. Defender 90 hardtops powered by the 3.5 liter 182hp-233 lbft Buick designed aluminum V8 and 4-speed automatic tended to need a couple more seconds, 9.8, 17.6, 75.0, back in the day. Fitted with its original 2.5-liter turbo diesel and 5-speed manual, R90 might have lumbered to 60 in about 16 seconds back when it was new. Chassis and Suspension This build fits a heavy-duty LT230 transfer case similar to the original, which offsets both the front and rear driva shafts. This setup positions the front and rear axle differential pumpkins one directly behind the other, a boon when trying to dodge a tall obstacle. Those axles are also new, heavy-duty parts. 
This setup brings some compromises, though, like the drum parking brake that acts on the transfer case, rather than directly holding the rear wheels. There are also limits to the power and torque this setup can handle, so Richard Ed says his team is working on a new, more conventional, and stronger drivetrain setup better suited to some of the higher power LT1-based GM crate engines Osprey is readying for sale. This chassis uses the slightly lower ride height, which negates the need for double cardan driva shafts and simplifies the radius arm designs, they are nevertheless all new. Of course, the radius arms that locate the front axle limit the steering angle these big 265-70 or 18 Cooper Discoverer at three tires can swing, which results in a giant, 40-plus foot turning circle, bigger than a Mercedes GLS class and well up from the 36-ish feet skinny tired Land Rover 90s of your managed. Interior Mod Cons There's a lot of lipstick on this former farmer, and it struggles to deliver all the modern conveniences, leaning heavily on an Atoto S8 aftermarket infotainment unit to provide Bluetooth phone connectivity, wired or wireless Apple CarPlay slash Android Auto, hands-free voice controls, and a backup camera, viewing from bumper level, it's actually quite helpful for aiming between parking lines when clean. But for anyone mildly acquainted with modern cars, this one's tough to acclimate to, and the Rockford Fosgate speakers have their work cut out for them in shouting down this engine. So will you on a hands-free phone call? The central AC vents don't cool the outboard extremities much, and the defroster relies on wires in the windshield, which can distort vision when hot. Finally, all that flat glass delivers lifelike reflections that can also be distracting, a problem endemic to the classic Defender in general. What's it like to drive slash live with? Richard Ed reckons this is the perfect Manhattan City truck, owing to its tidy dimensions and attention-grabbing looks and sounds. We reckon it's ideal for making an entrance at cars and coffee gigs. As transportation, it suffers mightily from a brittle ride on small impacts and major harshness on bigger bumps. This example also suffered from some sort of electronic powertrain gremlin that caused it to enter limp mode every time it got full throttle, so our performance numbers are at 90% throttle. Between that problem limiting our confidence in probing its Corvette nature, and the disconcerting ratio of overall height to wheelbase slash track footprint that limited our willingness to bend it hard into turns, we struggled to find any joy at the helm apart from the uniqueness of the experience, and when onlookers were fawning over its design slash paint slash interior slash etc. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.